Improving Alpha, Innovation in Investing, ESG, and Technology with Michael Oliver Weinberg is being sponsored by Alternatives Watch and powered by Vidrio Financial. For a 360-degree view of investor mandate activity across alternative investments, turn to Alternatives Watch. Vidrio Financial is the first technology-enabled service for allocators looking to harness investment complexity and make better allocation decisions. Learn more at vidrio.com. That is V-I-D-R-I-O.com. Hi, this is Michael Oliver Weinberg. We'd like to welcome everyone to the Improving Alpha Innovation in Investing ESG and Technology podcast series. Today, Sandro Salsano, president of the Salsano Group and family office will join us. So listeners have a high level sense of our roadmap for today. We'll start with some background, then discuss investing and technology. Investors and business leaders should be able to extract a great deal of value from Sandro's insight. On that note, welcome, Sandro. Thank you, Michael. It's great to be here. Yeah. Uh, look, let's, let's get right into it. Let's, let's start just you know, briefly with your career. It's super interesting. Obviously, you and I have spent time together at Milken. Um, you know, how, how's it evolved at to where you are today? So, you know, a, a short background on your career. Uh, sure. We started the family office uh, about uh, 15 years ago. So I had actually a, uh, one of the first company where I was a partner um, at a, an interesting exit. Uh, we actually had Goldman Sachs buying a stake into the business and it was in the financial sector. And, it's, and that's where I really started uh, um, managing my own capital. Um, and, and over the last, I would say, uh, 15 years, we've been uh, uh, mostly involved in private equity uh, globally uh, with a bias towards uh, emerging markets in Latin America. Um, and, and we did a bit of venture capital, we did a bit of real estate. Uh, and so really now, today, the family office uh, um, is really focusing on, uh, I would say, uh, similar strategy, which is... Uh, uh, very long term, uh, deep value. For very long term, uh, you know, our horizon tends to be uh, ten years or more. Um, and, and then, in terms of in terms of uh, uh, sectors, uh, we are pretty agnostic, I would say. But we 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 like to to stick, I would say, to four or five uh, that include logistic, agri, food, the fintech. Uh, we have uh, waste, uh, water, and renewables. So this is really uh, our core. But then we, we have been doing co-investments with other uh, families or investing into funds that are not necessarily in our uh, core. Um, but I would say this is, this is where we are today. There's a lot to uh, to unpack there, as, as the saying goes. Um, where to, I mean... So, I mean, fintech and and water and renewables and waste would seem to me to be um, v- very much involved in um, in technology or technology related. Um, is is that right, or, or or are your investments there more traditional? Uh, uh, yes, um, and, and actually, um, you know, we've been uh, we, we've been looking uh, mostly from the tech perspective. So we were lucky to see the seven unicorns uh, globally. Um, uh, so we, we saw some of those companies from a very early stage, uh, but also uh, I would say that the, um, uh, in, in, we, we, are, we are seeing some of those technology and obviously today valuations are not what they were a couple of years ago. So it makes it, it, makes it for us much more attractive from an investment standpoint. What, what, yeah, look, I, and do you, um... Yeah. So obviously, to your point, we've had massive valuation contraction, multiple contraction over the last, um, well, let's say over the almost two years, uh, really last year and this year, I'd say, or plus or minus two years. Um, do you think, do you, I mean, I know I'm making a bit of a generalization here, but so you can be more nuanced if you want, but do you think valuations have uh, have sort of troughed and, and reached their their low level or do you think they're still falling or have they even rebounded? Uh, yeah, you know, I you know we are very bad at making forecasts, so I 
Okay. Um, I, 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 I'll say for, for us, the way we look at it, you know, and that's in a way um, the way I think we've been delivering our find out performing was obviously a having very long uh, uh, horizons. Uh, so really taking a, you know, a 10 years view, which is not very common, as you know, most of the investors probably they, they have a, a, a most one year view and they want to make money fast. And that's not what we do. Uh, and the other thing is really, uh, you know, usually looking at uh, uh, from a perspective of, uh, uh, of of capital allocation um, and opportunities. So today, in some in some emerging markets, for example, you have obviously uh, you haven't got much capital, and you definitely have more opportunities than capital. And so there are companies that have been in a way. Uh, forgotten, and some of them are actually uh, delivering their free free cash flow positive, um, and that's that's the type of opportunity we are looking at, and we and we like, especially when it's not so crowded, because you know we uh, we're not going to compete on pricing, we're not going to compete with uh, you know with the large uh, you know private equity or uh, sovereign or institutional players. That's not really our game, and actually. Uh, if if too many people are looking at it, it's probably not for us. I would say we we usually like to to see forgotten companies, companies that maybe are not so sexy, uh, that they sound boring, and, and especially uh, if there is uh, uh, like today in some areas and in some markets, there isn't much ca- capital available. Uh, super interesting. Sounds like a great uh, deep value strategy, um, which is what you initially had prefaced the conversation by saying. Um, yeah. And, you know, you, it's funny because, you you know, um, just just within the last week or so, we recorded a podcast with um, Paul Sohn, who I worked with at Soros. And 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 he's also a great investor. And um, he, he uh, his view is similar to yours, that same sort of you could almost call it a time arbitrage, even though it's not an arbitrage because you're not obviously shorting anything, but you're, you're looking at a longer perspective than you like you two are both looking at a longer perspective than most others, uh, which is very sensible. Do you, do you apply? You you did mention, um, for example, in emerging markets where there's insufficient capital, you know, I I would imagine though, is, is there not, is there more risk or is, is there not more risk? Um, And do you, you know, do you have to apply a higher discount rate or, you know, do you do you need do you have a higher hurdle because of that? Uh, yeah, I, I think you know nowadays, uh, obviously the as we all know, obviously rates are creating a, a higher hurdle for everybody, and uh, and that's 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 a good thing. And I think also, obviously, the the harder rate, you know, we are not a fund, so we are not really managing, uh, you know, outside capital. Uh, we do co investment uh, with other institutions and and. Uh, uh, like minded co investors, but in reality, um, I, I guess it's really for us, it's really uh, obviously absolute return plus preservation of capital. And uh, you know, we've been able to generate uh, IRR about 30% in our portfolio, so we've been, uh, I'll say, also very, very lucky over the last 15 years, uh, especially with the venture capital cycle um and a bit with the private equity and i think nowadays obviously it's going to be more difficult for to generate alpha uh there's definitely much more competition uh which we in a way we try to avoid so to answer your question on the risk i think it's very relative i think you know the um you know a company in a country that we know or we think we know pretty well might not be as risky uh from our perspective obviously um other investors might disagree um, and, and so for us, that's really how I think we create opportunity with, you know, really trying to find value where perhaps others don't see the value or where others see too much risk. So for us, might be actually the risk reward might be uh, in our favor. Um, uh, and, and so uh, in, in, in some in some markets, for example, you know, you, you would have probably political risk, you will have... Uh, uh, and then geopolitical risk, then you'll have company-specific risk. Uh, and sometimes I think that the fact that we, we can afford to be very long-term, so we, we, can, we can go through different cycles, uh, at least a couple of cycles, that, that will help us. While, while I, I would say other probably private equity funds or, or investors that, that they have you know, a shorter horizon, uh, obviously, they will struggle with that, um, and, and so the the harder rate I think is really is really personal, and uh, 
Um, and as I said, for us, it's really obviously preservation of capital. Um, we, we always try to find a way where uh, there is a, a you know a cash um, uh, for our for our investment, and uh, and we like to keep it for as long as we can, uh, unless obviously there's been a change, a, a, a fundamental change in uh, in the thesis of the investment. Makes sense. And um, if you're comfortable sharing this, are there certain countries that you prefer and similarly others that you would avoid politically or for other reasons? Uh, well, I, I can I can tell you, for example, today, uh, you know, there, there is uh, uh, we are definitely going to be very active in Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Peru. And those are countries that probably politically people might not like those days. But, but as I said before, the. Um, so talking about Latin America, which is an area uh, uh, we, we have been investing in for, 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 for over a decade, I, I, I think it's important to, to keep in mind that actually from an investor standpoint, you know, you don't want to probably invest when things are, they look too great. You know, <laughs> they, I think that really for us has been when, when things go from, you know, uh, pretty bad to, you know, K. Okay. And, and and or or you or you are in in, in a in a spot where you know things are uh, you know can can get better to put it this way. Obviously, things can always go wrong and they can can get worse. But I think that the uh, in the valuations, the uh, some markets that actually they in our view uh, the uh, they don't reflect uh, uh, they don't reflect that, and actually they they there is a uh, uh, we, we see lots of value uh, we see, and we think we can we can extract value uh, in some of those countries in some of those companies uh, more on the private equity side uh, whereas perhaps other investors might, might not see much value because they for them probably might be too risky and um, and they might, might and, and they might think that the um, you know in the in the short term things might get worse so I think it's, it's really relative and the uh, um, and of course, I think there is lots of psychology in it, and also uh, the fact that we can, uh, you know, go through different challenges, and uh, and we've seen cycles on, on other companies as well. Apologies if this is a dumb question, but you know, if, if you're talking about markets like Brazil and Mexico, Colombia, Peru, um, and you know, I, I I sort of I don't know, I kind of think of you as sort of. Um, I don't know in, in in between Europe and the and maybe the U.S. or um, how do you deal with the FX risk, the, the foreign exchange risk, the currency risk in those but we countries? Don't, we don't really we don't really age. We don't really age. I think that actually today actually you are in a good position in the cycle because I think that the uh, obviously everybody was worried about inflation and uh, and obviously we probably might have high rates for a while. But 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 I think that the the region. Um, is probably going to perform on the currency level. So if I look at Mexico, if I look, for example, at Brazil, I think that also the, uh, if you look at the commodity cycle and some in the agri uh, commodities or soft commodities, I think that they're going to actually perform much better than what people uh, uh, think. So I think you, you might have actually been surprised. But yeah, but we don't we don't edge. Obviously, Panama is in US dollars, so we don't have to edge. Um, and some other investors might edge, but uh, but we look at it uh, um, uh, really on, a, on an unedged and unlevered base. Uh, we don't, you know, in our philosophy, in, in our in our company, we don't take leverage. Uh, we are against leverage, really. Um, so we, really, we, we we you know we try to to be very disciplined in our investments. Understood. Uh, that's fair, uh, and clearly it's working for you, so that's great. Um, what, what about um, if, uh, g- g- going back to um, tech technology investing? You did mention venture capital, and obviously you mentioned um, valuations have contracted. Uh, are, are you doing much in technology or fintech now? Or, and if so, could you talk about that a little bit? If if not, that's uh, fine. Yes, uh, we, you know we were we were very active. Uh, I would say starting fifteen years ago. Um, and then, and then I would say the the last couple of years, we, we actually will be, we have been mostly exiting uh, for the last three years. The we uh, you know we, we felt that there was really a you know a gold rush. You know everybody was really 
obviously interest rates were at zero, so uh, people were really valuing, you know, all those companies with no revenues, no cash flow. Then we had the SPAC, obviously, bubble and uh, and and the crypto bubble. Uh, so we have several bubbles. I think they were created because of zero interest rates and the. Uh, and, and effectively, things that I couldn't understand, you know, they didn't make much sense to us. And, and so the um, today, I think it's a, uh, we, we are in a situation where actually we see good value. You know, for example, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, without going into more, more maybe perhaps private company where we own uh, uh, on the tech space where we are uh, uh, buying minority majority stake through convertible or through direct stakes. Uh, if you just look for only the big uh, uh, tech, you know, look at the company like Google, I think that, you know, there is lots of value there. If you, you know, you have got a company that's trading probably, I don't know, 25 times earnings uh, next year or trailing. And, you know, it's, uh, I, I found it very attractive. I think that there is, uh, uh, you know, you have a dominant player uh, and, and you have uh, uh, also a big play on AI. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously that's more on the list side, but I think that, you know, you have, uh, uh, you, you, you will have opportunity. And I, I think I think that the, uh, the private space as well, you will have companies that probably are going to be acquired by the big tech. Obviously, it would be much more difficult to value them and to have access to them. Um, and, and probably some investors will probably just, you know, if they want to play the AI or the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the cloud uh, or... I think they buy, they rather buy. They probably make money if they just stick with the, you know with the big names. Um, but I, I think there will be there will be a new cycle. There will be more value creation. Um, also in the tech sector, uh, we look at fintech, for example. Now we're looking at some prop tech, uh, and, and valuations now are very different from where they were, you know, a couple of years ago. You know, you 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 don't have the soft bank of this world just throwing money at each company. It creates valuations, you know, there is now, I think it's now is more, uh, I think now you, we can be more disciplined. We can actually look at free cash flow positive companies. Um, we can work with the founders, uh, uh, you know, and they think so we kind of, uh, our structure usually is with convertibles where we can have some uh, cash on, uh, and also we like to to get, to get uh, a, a, you know, a decent valuation, definitely, there, there's going to be a markdown on the on the previous one, you know, uh, um, and, and and so I, I think that you'll find uh, those types of opportunities. Also, um, you know, there will be some funds. There are funds that actually need to liquidate or they uh, they need to sell some positions. So I think it's interesting in uh, uh, you know select obviously the uh, if you have been following the company for a while and you. Um, uh, I think it helps really, uh, you know, uh, the fact that we can do lots of due diligence and we can come up with uh, um, with capital. You know, we have, we have flexibility. We can go on the credit side. We can you know, on the you know on the equity side. Uh, uh, and as I said, it helps that we have a long term horizon and we and we are, we don't have LPs. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, that's a nice luxury to have. Um, uh, okay, and then shifting gears from um, from from that, um, you look, look like just at a high level. What's the biggest challenge you faced in in achieving your goals? I think the challenges are really uh, today. Uh, uh, obviously, the the to execute probably very large deals. You know, we are we obviously we are limited by our uh, resources. So sometimes we need, we don't need to sell a position. You know, we. Um, uh, we can write a large ticket. Uh, we've been writing tickets from 50 to, I think the largest was about $400 million in equity. Um, and obviously, you know, we're not a sovereign, so I think the challenge is really, today we see more capital, so, so we see more opportunity than capital, uh, at least from our standpoint. So uh, we like to do more. Uh, that's definitely one challenge. Uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, um, it's a good moment to uh, to look at things and to execute things. And so, one of the things probably we are, we are considering is really partnering up with uh, some large institutions that have been knowing us, uh, where they can actually help us uh, buying a majority stake or executing on a, um, on a, on a uh, on a private equity deal where we see um, a, 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 an opportunity. 
especially on the deep value on a company that perhaps you know we've been knowing for over 10 years where we did lots of due diligence where that we know pretty well which is probably an off-market deal that is not brokered by you know by the bankers or by or by lawyers so so this is i think our our main challenge and um, uh, um, we built very strong track record and very good relationships with the especially with the, some large institutions um, and institutional uh, co-investors. So th- this would help us, I think, uh, to uh, to execute on the uh, on the private on on the large private equity deals we are looking at. Yeah, that sounds great. Sounds like a great idea in light of the um, the this, the robust opportunity set that you described today. Um, okay, that's that's interesting. And um, and and then. Um, What's what's a red flag with either a manager or a company that you're looking to buy that such that you wouldn't invest that you just sort of run away or something that turns you off perhaps? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, you, we 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 actually we we are pretty fast in saying no. <laughs> I <laughs> think you know the um, I, I, I I I think that you know we, uh, we probably have over a hundred things we look at we probably do you know one. Um, there is on managers, I would say definitely we always look at the track record. So um, and and if the if the if the fund manager is not invested uh, and he hasn't got a, a big portion of his wealth into the fund, we probably wouldn't look at it uh, or be very skeptical. Um, I think it's important to have a strong alignment. Um, in, yep. in, ter- in terms of companies, uh, um, I would say red flags is really. Uh, uh, the poor governance, or uh, that you, that you can find in some companies, or uh, or the fact that the uh, the company uh, for us, you know, the, the, in 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 some emerging markets, obviously uh, there is a, a as I say, usually they have like a three uh, types of accounts, you know, one for the X Y yeah, yeah, yeah. race, yeah. and one for, and, and so obviously the. Uh, I think I, I think for us, you know, we wanna we wanna work with good partners that people that we that share the same ethos, uh, that have a very very similar approach and philosophy. Uh, so we uh, it doesn't matter if, if you're a majority or minority investor. We really like to to work with with good people and and obviously sometimes we we, we can have uh, uh, we can make mistakes and we do make uh, mistakes. But I think uh, you know the. Uh, we we hope not to make mistakes on the people. So uh, the the you know, the business might not go as as well as we would like. Or uh, but then you know I, I think the uh, the the hardest mistake to swallow is when we are wrong on the people um, because at the end it's going to be a people business. So you know in the management or you know or the the founder um, and uh, and so yeah. So the, the, this I would say is. Uh, uh, are usually the red flags we look at. Yeah, and that's a great segment. Uh, segue, excuse me. What's a mistake? Um, if you don't mind sharing, where look, obviously on a net basis, you've done phenomenally, and you know your your business and your family office are thriving, and and your investments are doing great. But but for listeners to learn, um, you know, we all make mistakes occasionally, and the, you know, clearly, great investors like yourself make far fewer mistakes than they. Than, than either others or, um, but but what is one mistake that you've made, and what's a lesson learned from it? Uh, well, we we made we, we made we, we always make mistakes, and always we try to uh, uh, to reduce the mistakes and hopefully to learn. But the uh, I would say uh, you know the the biggest mistake was for for us trusting uh, uh, the wrong people. And so, in some, uh, you know, uh, I, I think you want to make sure that there is a, a common uh, ethos and the investment uh, horizon and philosophy. Um, and 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 also, I'd say is, uh, um, if you have co-investors, you probably won't have people that have. Uh, they don't not only say that they are long term, but they actually they they mean it and they have a, a uh, and they have a track record with that. So. To give you an idea, you know, if you are if you are buying a company, you probably don't want to have uh, you know another investor who is uh, co-investing with you and who wants to exit after a couple of years. You know, so I think that the um, you, you need to be aligned and uh, um, and you want to have people that actually can have the patience to stay in for ten years or or even more sometimes. Uh, um, uh, because from our standpoint, obviously, if, unless there is a 
a fundamental change. We, we, we don't see, we don't have a pressure to sell an investment, especially if there is no debt and especially if the, uh, we think it's sound and uh, it's something we'd like to hold for a very long period. Uh, uh, and, and so I think this, this will be probably the, uh, the two main mistakes we made in the past and uh, we hope not to repeat. Understood. Uh, you mentioned we, we talked about earlier, you, you sort of alluded to higher rates and rates maybe higher for longer. Um, let's just touch base briefly on inflation. Uh, you know, obviously something that's come back to the Western world with a vengeance over the past, um, you know, post pandemic period um, from. Uh, and then you mentioned that, you know, um, you know, you're particularly interested in, in countries like um uh, Peru and um, Colombia, Mexico and Brazil, um, you know, it, it, obviously, historically, South America, Latin America are known for, um, if not hyperinflation, material inflation. I, two questions. H- how do you deal with inflation there and or what are your thoughts on it? Yes, uh, no, you're totally right. Obviously, if you look, uh, without going to Venezuela, obviously, uh, you have countries <laughs> with the very high inflation. And obviously, that's that's in a way part of your risk reward, a part of your equation. Um, and for for us, the you know we uh, we have a view, but you know we we can't really predict uh, you know the world. And uh, and obviously, we can definitely have an idea on 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 on, on CPI and PPI. We can um, you know take a view. Um, uh, in, in in terms, I mean, we do believe that we definitely gonna we, we're gonna live with the high inflation for a while, um, and, and so this is a kind of a new harder rate for everybody for investors, um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I, uh, I I I think that some some countries are doing a better job on on the monetary policies and fiscal policies than others. Uh, but obviously they can change. You know, you have uh, uh, you have elections in some of those countries you mentioned soon. Um, so we mo- we monitor that as well. Uh, and the, the um, for 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 us is has uh, uh, been uh, uh, not necessarily a a negative uh, component in our investment. So the we look at uh, obviously at. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if you if you look at uh, uh, you know the recent uh, developments on a global stage, uh, everybody was extremely worried about it, and uh, and then things are, are kind of cooling off. Uh, you know, everybody was talking about the very hard landing, now soft landing, then no landing, and then a recession. Now maybe there is no recession. So so you know, I, we we are not a, we are not uh, in the game of making prediction uh, and, and going on TV and uh, you know and making a call like. Uh, I see there are so many experts, and uh, you know, I, I think everybody can make a can make a prediction. You know, so um, we, we really like to you know uh, uh, to do our work and uh, uh, to look at uh, uh, companies that uh, uh, we think uh, are in a they, they have an edge in a, in a country or in a sector or in a um, specific geography uh, where we can get a decent valuation, and uh, you know we can work out, we can work with the management and uh, uh, with the founders, um, and then we, uh, you know, we take uh, we take a calculated uh, risk, uh, and obviously in in our model we'll factor in uh, you know a, a, a the, the inflation part, uh, but as I said, it's not something that I. Uh, you know, I uh, I stress about I don't sleep uh, at night. It's it's just it's just part of the equation, I guess. Understood. Uh, that's sensible. And look, yeah, I, I completely agree with you. The way I've invested largely, uh, m- maybe not at Soros as much, but since since Soros over the last sort of twenty years is s- similar. I sort of. Uh, try to not make forecasts on things like where the market's going or where inflation's going um, rather uh, in, invest in, in, in good, good companies or places where there's value irrespective of, of, of what happens with sort of inflation or markets, obviously like yourself subject to valuation. Um, so yeah, that's, that's very sensible. Um, Phil and th- shifting gears, uh, you know, look, you're, you're very involved in philanthropy um, what are you what what are you focused on in from a philanthropic front these days 
Uh, you know, we we are uh, uh, with my wife. We we co-founded the uh, Salsano Shani Foundation when we got married. So it was uh, over ten years ago now. Um, our focus has been, uh, I would say, uh, on kids and education uh, a lot in a lot in Latin America, but really global. Uh, um, and so we were we were uh, really trying to apply to the region a model that would work. Uh, in other countries, on other areas, on the education front, uh, um, and we also partner up with, uh, uh, I would say, with, with great uh, partners like uh, the, the, the Global Teacher Prize and uh, the best schools. And uh, uh, so we are we are involved at the board level or uh, um, different capacity or the Global Dignity, uh, which was the Prince Agro Norway with Richard Branson and several uh, Nobel prizes. Um, uh, Tutu was also there, and then we, and then, and then we, uh, we there now we, we are looking to do more also at the university level. So it really starts from I would say a, a, a related nursery level with orphanages, uh, uh, and, and now we're shifting more towards all the university with the university really trying to create scholarships. Uh, so uh, there are university where I, I was privileged to uh, somehow study or or. or uh, uh, have a relationship with uh, and uh, uh, in, for example in the UK with Oxford or in in the US I uh, I, I, j- I recently joined the board of trustee at the University uh, of San Diego in California so we're, uh, I'm also going to be involved on the uh, on investment committee for endowment and uh, and really there I think for the future we'll, we will look at to do more scholarships uh, probably more on the uh, in sectors where we think could be. Uh, for the new generations, uh, everybody's talking about AI. So we we'll, we we'll, we like to think that if they can study math or physics, uh, uh, among other things, and obviously life science, AI, I think they they will be in uh, in good shape to you know uh, to really to start a company and to be very entrepreneurial, or just to you know to find a, a, a decent job. Um, and, and I think so. We are trying really to foster that and uh, and, and and to do more, obviously. Uh, the bias will always be in Latin America, as, as there is uh, uh, there is a lot to do there. But we, we partner up with other uh, institutions also for uh, uh, for different markets, and it can be uh, Africa, can be Asia, uh, uh, and other emerging markets. Uh, and the way we look at it is really like a company, you know, the uh, like a startup. Uh, uh, or an or established company, you know, obviously you take different risks, and uh, and sometimes it's easier just to, you know, uh, as I was mentioning before, you know, obviously we have we have a portfolio of AI companies. We started investing in AI maybe you know four years ago, five years ago, but today probably I think the best play is just to you know to invest uh, for many investors in in a company like Google or Amazon or Microsoft or Nvidia rather than you know trying to pick you know uh, the the uh, the new startup is going to probably be already very expensive and everybody is actually throwing money at them and uh, and not necessarily may uh, an investor will have the ability to understand uh, you know the the value add and the, and the product and uh, and how why they are valuable and the same with philanthropy so sometimes for us it's been uh, you know, we made a mistake where we were really backing some startups uh, or some or some uh, organizations that uh, they probably didn't have the reach or the scalability. Uh, uh, while sometimes you're looking at, uh, you know, like a fund or a company or any investments at the track record, you know, is probably better uh, for us uh, in terms also of results and impact in really partnering up with, uh, uh, with with another foundation who already delivered the results and uh, um, and so we can help them there uh, and also uh, we, we will uh, try to apply their business model uh, in, in in our region for example so this is really the way we looked at it really from more from a uh, more strategic way got it um sounds like between the investment world the philanthropy world and your you know and 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 your family you've you've got a lot on your plate which is great um what if, what about um just shifting gears to a, a sort of a light lighter subject um have you or or maybe not have you read any good books lately or do you have a favorite book 
uh, yes, uh, I, I uh, probably one of my favorite book is uh, uh, Thinking Fast and Slow. Uh, and and uh, probably put it in on the same league of uh, you know uh, the wealth of nations by Adam Smith. I think is uh, is brilliant and there is lots of psychology. Uh, you probably read it and uh, it's it's definitely a, uh, uh, I read it a couple of times and I find it fascinating. Really, how you can really apply psychology to investing uh, and how people can actually. Um, you know, uh, obviously greed and fear, but also the biases we have uh, as just human beings and, and the fact that uh, often we have the emotions controlling, uh, you know, our risks uh, and our uh, perspective. And, and then you have, you have a lot, of, I think, on the, um, you know, how we can, uh, the cognitive part and the, uh, the, uh, the way that our judgment will work and jump into conclusions too often that are wrong. And so really, I think that uh, um, it, it is very important. Uh, I think that uh, it's always a good reminder that uh, we should be very humble. We have to constantly think uh, and ask ourselves if, you know, uh, what we're doing makes sense. And uh, um, and, and also that perhaps we are wrong because we, we, uh, uh, we uh, I, I think the, you know, the, uh, the the fact that we 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 had a very good track record doesn't mean that we're gonna continue having that and uh, and 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 we always have to stay humble and uh, understand that uh, uh, and and obviously when when you make mistakes and you and your investments doesn't perform as you wish I mean that that keeps you humble that keeps you grounded uh, but 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 I think it's always important you know to. To understand that uh, we always have been uh, uh, often very lucky uh, um, and, and blessed, and 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 this is and this book I think is a good reminder of that. Along those lines, any advice aside from reading that book, if they haven't, and yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, I've read that book and uh, had the privilege of meeting the author. Um, agree, it's uh, it's a it's a great book. Um, any advice you have for other allocators or family offices or? Um, uh, it, it, I'll, I'll pause there. Um, well, you know, the, I, I'm not sure I call it advice, but I, I, I can definitely say that you know, staying humble and uh, and really believing in yourself is uh, uh, at the same time I think a, a positive quality because you might have critics and people that actually might not uh, uh, understand with your view or, or or see the way you know understand the value you look in a company or an investment and. Uh, uh, so you really, you know, you need to definitely fo- f- be focused and uh, disciplined and, b- and believe in yourself. Um, and on the other hand, you also need to be humble because you can make mistakes. And I think that, you know, as uh, uh, the, the way the way I look at it is that, you know, uh, unfortunately, things might not go as you wish, but uh, uh, you will always have a, then an, hopefully another chance, no? And, uh, and I believe in, in, in the new chances, uh, in the second chances. So the um, my my small advice would be definitely to uh, to to remain humble and to and to believe in yourself, you know, in your in your uh, in your investment philosophy, and the, so the uh, um, trying to learn every day. So this is really what we we try to do uh, is really a, a, on a daily basis. Uh, a, we try to get better. We try to learn more. We we try to. Uh, 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 at different levels as human beings, I think uh, that's that is very important. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm, you know, look, I'm an adjunct professor at Columbia Business School, as you know, which is just just for fun. I teach in the spring every year. I mean, it's a real class for credit. It's it's a core class. It's advanced, but but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's funny every every when I sort of force myself to go up to campus in the, in the sort of when I'm not teaching and that I go to something, whether it's on ESG or investing or um, emerging markets, whatever the case may be a dignitary, a world leader. I, I I'm always glad that I've sort of forced myself to go up there and make the track to, you know, 130th street and, 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 and West side highway, because it's, it's just, it's always great to constantly be learning. So I, I couldn't agree more. Um, any, anything we didn't discuss that, uh, that that we that 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 you think is interesting, or that you like to discuss with other, or, or that you think we should have, or you're discussing with other investors. Sorry. Uh, well, you know, I I, I think I think uh, uh, I think this was fun, and uh, I appreciate, the, and I thank you for 
uh, for the opportunity uh, to have this chat, you know. And I'm always, you know, uh, I'm always, I'm always very approachable. So, you know, if there is any other investors who want to be in touch with us, with great pleasure, I'm happy to have. Uh, 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 additional conversations uh, on what we do and the way, uh, and you know, always we like we always like to explore synergies and uh, and learn from other like minded investors. So for us, uh, uh, um, uh, it is always a is always a, a pleasure and a privilege when we can uh, share our experience and learn from others. Yeah, it's funny, and like yourself. I find that often one of the reasons I enjoy speaking on at, at, at events is because you, you you know afterwards you find that um, like-minded investors who are often super smart and thoughtful will c- come up to you and and you know say yeah you know we do the same thing or uh, you know we have similar philosophies or yeah we're looking at that too so I, I, again I think I I couldn't agree with you more um, look on that note uh, I'd like to thank you for a super interesting discussion. Um, you know, sharing your most valuable asset with us, your time. Uh, and I hope, or we hope listeners have a better appreciation for, you know, what one of our more thoughtful business leaders is thinking about and, and, and how they may benefit from it. Um, so this is your host, Michael Oliver Weinberg, hoping you join us again uh, for our next episode where we speak with another thought leader uh, who'll provide insight into improving alpha via innovation. Thanks again, Sandra. Thank you for listening to Improving Alpha Innovation in Investing ESG and Technology, sponsored by Alternatives Watch and powered by Vidrio Financial. With Vidrio Financial Asset Managers, endowments and foundations, pensions, family offices, insurance plans, OCIOs, and sovereign wealth funds can cut through the complexity of asset allocation to reduce costs, mitigate portfolio risk, optimize compliance controls, and improve performance analytics. Interested to learn more? Contact us today at vidrio.com. That's V I D R I O.com. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Vidrio Financial or our host, Michael Oliver Weinberg. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding investment planning.